dashing through the snow in a one horse soap. Just kidding, guys. You thought it was Frank Sinatra. No, it's just me, Mr. Cheap. How's everybody doing? What's up, YouTuberinos? It has been a while. Um, today, we are going to watch another video from Creative on the Cheap, the super talented, multi degreed advanced crafter. And today, we are watching Christmas crafts from the Creative on the Cheap channel. I am going to attempt to explain better than she did in her original video how she does everything that she does. She does like to speed things up, and so I may have to talk a little more quickly than normal on this because apparently this thing is in fast motion. Um, no cheaty scissors here on this one we are just using regular scissors to cut out circular pieces of paper with words printed on them you can choose your own words doesn't have to be the words that she used the words that she used are probably not very good anyway and then we are going to take this gumball machine i think it's a gumball machine maybe a doorknob uh, doorknob cut out I just tapped something. I don't know what I did. The microphone like almost fell over on me. Uh, we're going to paint the outside of the gumball machine doorknob. Uh, in this case, we've used a red color. Oh, it said happy holiday. It was already a Christmas sign. It did not need to be remade as something else. It was already a Christmas sign. Normally, you would remake a gumball machine or a doorknob into something more Christmassy at Christmas time. This one, you could just sit out as is. You don't need to do anything to it. Um, but in this case, she did not like that it said happy holidays and apparently wanted it to say something different instead so she's going to paint over that part of it uh, the color that she is using is called Santa's Coat Red. Um, it's also the same color that was used for the scarf of the snowman. That is not Frosty. Uh, that is not the original Frosty. Frosty was trademarked and licensed by someone It could not be used for this video. Um, now we're gonna take that paper circle that we cut out and put some words on. Again, words of your choice. Don't need to use the same words that she did. Um, and this is going to say, made with love. I'm having to turn my head sideways while I read this. She's going really, really fast and I just can't read that fast. When you read a book do you read it quickly like do you do you read it so fast that you don't really know what the word said until later on when it hits you that it was actually something meaningful and important or enjoyable um, sometimes I read and then like three hours later I'll laugh out loud and Courtney will say what just happened and I'll say oh I I finally got the joke that I read earlier because I read through it so quickly. Um, that's from doing these voiceovers. That happens because I have been trying to keep up with her videos that are played at like three times speed and I have to talk at the speed that she crafts. She does not actually craft this quickly. You'll see her hands moving very quickly here. Um, you should not move your hands that quickly with a hot glue gun. You will burn yourself or someone else. Um, pets especially are susceptible to hot glue guns when you're moving this quickly, but Courtney does not actually move. This is normal speed. Now she's back to normal speed. The bow did not just tie itself. She tied that and then she like cut through the magic of YouTube editing. She has gotten to the point where the bow is on there and now we are back to fast speed again. And I feel like every time she goes back to fast speed, my talking goes back to fast speed. So I apologize if I'm talking too quickly. Now, this is a very important point. We should back the video up here, except I don't know how to do that. She took a peppermint candy and glued it on there. It was not a real peppermint candy, just like these gingerbread people are not made from real gingerbread. These crafts look edible, but they are not. Just pretend it's a poinsettia plant and you should not be eating it. The bow and the peppermint is gone already. Um, not sure what happened to the bow and the peppermint. Maybe she did not like them on there, but she got rid of them. And now we just have gingerbread people on our word circle. Oh, there's another one. She made two. So she made the same thing twice. Just different ways you can do it. They're essentially the exact same craft. Um, yeah. Or is it reversible? Maybe it flips around. If it's reversible, that would be good because we're running out of storage in the house and I can't find any more closet space for two projects. Now again, we have a perfectly good already Christmas craft item here. Uh, it is ready to go. Just sit that one out on the shelf. That's probably what she's going to do with it. Um, remove the cord hanging off of the bottom so that it works right. Or you could completely disassemble it and take the bow and the pine cone off of it because you don't want it to smell like pine. You want it to smell like peppermint. 
Um, maybe she's just going to use the lid from this. It looks like she's just going to use the lid. Um, and I think the, the little loop on the end of it, that's for hanging a towel off of. So she's probably going to mount this on the wall and hang like a hand towel on it next to the sink in the powder room off of the kitchen. Um, also she couldn't find it in brown at the store, so she had to buy the black one and now she's going to paint it brown instead. Uh, this brown color is, well, I can't tell you the name of it. Um, the video would probably get an age restriction on it or something if I told you the name of that brown color. Um, but let's just say it's not chocolate. Um, now we're back to disassembling things. We're going to take things apart. She is using manual tools. Uh, power tools would have made it faster. Um, and then she could have played the video at normal speed, but instead she had to use manual tools. And so we're having to watch it at fast speed. Uh, now more of the inappropriate brown color is being applied. Since she could not find this piece in brown, she bought it in black and is just having to paint it instead. She has placed some green tape around the base of it. Green and red are good colors for Christmas, so that's why she used the green tape around the base of the fake candle here um, so that it would look more Christmassy. Apparently it was not a good color green though because she has taken that tape off and is now going to use yellow instead. Yellow, not typically a Christmas color. The one thing that you will often see in yellow at Christmas time is Santa's buckle for his large black leather belt that goes around the Santa's coat red um, colored coat that he wears with a little fur lining at the neck and down the center. Uh, but Santa's buckle on his belt is the only thing you'll ever see at Christmas time in that yellow color. Um, so she just wanted to go out on a limb here and try something different, I think. Um, yellow and red, you know, these are the colors of McDonald's. I do believe this is actually trademarked, uh, that combination of yellow and red. And so we probably can't show it to you in the video here. I'm not even sure if you'll be able to see this portion of the video while I'm talking about it, uh, because we, we may have gotten a cease and desist order from the Golden Arches. Now, we're going to take the brown pieces of this and put it back on again with our manual tools, which she's going to have to really speed the video up. And now I have no idea what's going on. We are on to straws at this point. Um, I am not sure if you guys have run into this before, but we have been several places lately where they have paper straws uh, instead of plastic or whatever the straws are normally made out of. Um, and if you sit there for a while, the paper just turns to mush and it is very difficult to drink out of. I, I think I swallowed a piece of one the other day. Um, understand they're definitely more environmentally friendly, but they are not mouth friendly. Just going to throw that one out there. Now, oh, we're taking the straws and we're putting these on the corners. This is so if you bang the corner into something, it doesn't leave marks. Just like that little rubber bumper that goes on the door of your car. So when you open it up in the grocery store parking lot, it does not bang into the car next to you and leave the red color from your car on the white color from theirs. So this will keep the inappropriately named brown color paint from rubbing off onto other things if the corners of this item were to bang up against something else. Um, in this case, she has chosen to make them look somewhat like a candy cane. Uh, again, not a candy cane. All of the items in these videos that look like food should not be eaten. I repeat, should not be eaten. This is not actual pieces of candy cane. It is, in fact, paper straw, which disintegrates in water, which makes for a horrible material for straws. My Apple Watch is buzzing on my wrist, um, which is distracting to me, and so I apologize if I have lost focus for a minute. I will now get back on track. Again, a non-edible tiny gingerbread cookie. Uh, I do not believe that she painted that herself because it is done way too precisely. It would be a lot messier if she had done it herself. And yes, they all look identical, so I'm pretty sure that these were manufactured in a gingerbread factory somewhere. Um, also, when you see that long string of glue kind of hanging out there, that's because you did not clean off your glue gun before you used it. And wow, this is super messy. Like this is just a bad idea in general. I do like the concept of putting icing into a glue gun um, and then using it, you know, whether you're icing cinnamon rolls or sugar cookies, or in this case, trying to put it onto a craft, it's, it's a novel concept. Um, she's just way too messy with it and probably needs some sort of a stencil or a template. I'm not even sure that we got the same number of icing loops on each side of this. Uh, and that's just unacceptable. We need to have even amounts of icing loops on all sides of our lantern gingerbread candle holder. 
towel rod thing. More inedible candy. Again, do not eat the peppermints. They are not real peppermints. They are most likely made from wood or plastic um, or paper, like the straw that disintegrates when you try and drink out of it. And again, we've got all of these little white stringy things hanging out everywhere. She has not been cleaning it all. You can even see them hanging onto the glue gun. Uh, but this is what happens when you put icing in a glue gun. Uh, it does melt, and you can get it to come out of the tip of the glue gun, and you can use it to kind of paint with. Um, the icing, I do believe, is edible, uh, but don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. It may have been past its expiration date. She's now going to make some fake winter-looking outdoor greenery. Um, if this were a Monty Python movie, we would call it a shrubbery, but in this case, it is greenery. And those pieces, it looks like, you know, we've got some sort of a pine, a deciduous evergreen, um, and then something with leaves on it that has, like, sugar dusting on it. Oh, and we're finished now. And the candle blinks. Blink, blink, blinkety blink. Um, this is a pretty good-looking something for Christmas. I'm still not sure what the purpose of it is. I don't think it throws enough light that if your power were to go out, you could use that to illuminate the room. But... If that's your thing, go for it. Now, on to this. Again, perfectly good Christmas item on its own. Does not need any help from Courtney or anyone else. Uh, but apparently that's just unacceptable. So she is going to quote unquote help it. And I'm throwing up some big air quotes with those fingers. Uh, she probably just wanted the glitter sand from the bottom of it. So she got all the glitter sand out of the bottom of the already ready to decorate with Christmas jar with the tiny tree in it. And we now have a bunch of tiny wooden gingerbread men cutouts. Again, not edible. I'm not sure how many times I'm going to have to repeat myself in this video, but apparently a lot because otherwise one of you guys is going to try and eat this and it's just not going to go well. Unlike the tiny gingerbread men that went on to the lantern candle holder towel rod, uh, these tiny gingerbread men did not have any decor on them, and Courtney is going to decorate them herself. This is uh, really just advanced kindergarten. She's got a marker, and she's coloring with her marker. Um, also, I learned long ago in my first ever and only Dollar Tree haul video that if you put your hand behind an item when you hold it up to the camera, it will come into focus. So that's probably why she did that just a minute ago. It does look like she has sped the video up again, and I am fighting the urge to talk faster. She made a whole bunch of those. I think that they're mostly identical, but since they are handmade, it makes them a little more rare when you say handmade. There will be minor differences in some of those, and then she put them into the jar. Why she got a jar with glitter snow and a tree in it instead of just an empty jar, I can't tell you. Um, but she did, and she took all the other stuff out of it, and maybe that's going to be used in another project later on. And so it's kind of like a threefer, you know. You paid for the jar, but you got the other stuff for free. So three items for the price of one. Now, again, inedible peppermint. You cannot eat that peppermint. Also, that was not a real ladybug that she brought out. Ladybugs are not normally the size of your hand. They are much, much smaller. You could probably hold 17 ladybugs, more than that, 1,700 ladybugs in your hand. Um, in her case, she can only hold one because that is actually a vacuum. Uh, I don't know what it's called, and if you want to know where she got it, you'll have to ask in the comments down below, which she will probably read after she finds out I voiced over her video and put it up on her channel. Um, and once she's finished being mad at me, she can tell you where she got the ladybug vacuum, which is large. Again, hand behind items when you hold them up to the camera will help it to focus. She's made a sticker, I believe. Maybe she bought the sticker. It may have come from an actual gingerbread bakery because that is what the other circular pieces of paper that she put on the first gumball machine slash doorknob craft had on them. Um, but she put a sticker on it and it now has inedible gingerbread men surrounded by inedible peppermints with another inedible peppermint on top of the jar that held the tiny Christmas tree and the glitter snow. And next to it, we have a hot cocoa mug. Oh, maybe we're going to show that later. I don't know. Looks like we're going to make ice cream now. Um, ice cream cones are perhaps the best way to eat ice cream, 
because there are no dishes to wash after you are finished. Um, if you eat ice cream in a bowl or a mug or you know a dish of some sort, you're gonna have to wash that later because ice cream, like it doesn't do well when all the little just liquid bits sit on there for several days at a time, and it is made from. A dairy product and so if it sits out for a while it's just going to turn nasty and it's going to smell bad and so you will have to wash it but if you have cones or a waffle bowl a cone bowl something else made out of an edible product you could absolutely eat your ice cream out of that and not have to do dishes later now in this case i do not believe these are actual ice cream cones i do believe that these are tiny gnome hats uh, that she bought from a gnome village that she visited last Christmas and has been hiding away apparently to decorate with. She added some brocade, I believe that's how you pronounce it, um, around the edges. It was a white color um, after painting them brown, even though they were brown to start with, so not sure the point of that whole thing. Back to her miter shears, which she is absolutely in love with. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Courtney loves miter shears. Um, she uses them in every video, even when they're not necessary, just like with this. There is no miter cut involved in this. This is a regular cut, so you don't need miter shears. Just regular shears would work to cut these pieces off, but she always has her miter shears with her. They're actually attached to her key ring. Um, as she drives around, she's got miter shears just dangling right there on her keys all the time so that they're ready to use. Um, and, you know, she uses them in crafting videos, which you guys have seen, but she uses them for normal stuff too. Sometimes she's got to open a package, you know, it's just got to be done. And so she's got her miter shears right there on her keychain. She pulls them out, package opened, done. She can even open them at very precise angles if she wants to. Now, she has taken the ice cream cones, which were already brown and were painted another brown with the brocade around the bottoms of them, um, but not real ice cream cones because, again, nothing in this video is edible. She has now taken pieces of wood that the miter shear cut into shorter lengths and glued them inside for some reason and is now going to stack them on top of each other. This may be a game of some sort, a Christmas game, kind of like Jenga. How many of these can you stack up before the whole thing falls over? Um, that would be my guess as to where we're going with all of this. We now have some more of the brocade, which is being glued on. Oh, look at the strings. She does not clean that glue gun. I'm really going to have to talk to her about this. Maybe I'll just go clean it myself after this video. Uh, we'll make sure we get all of the little spider webby strings off of the edges of it. You notice that she's sitting the miter shears um, off to the side just so you can see them. It's kind of like, Nana Nana Boo Boo, I have miter shears and you don't, except that I think she puts links in all the videos of where you can go get them. So go get your own miter shears, and then she can't do that to you anymore. Now she's taken another project that has already been crafted, and she's cutting it with the miter shears. I guess you could do that. Uh, that's not really what these are used for. That piece of wood is way too thick to be cutting with those miter shears. Uh, I would recommend using some sort of a saw, especially a power saw. As I mentioned earlier, power tools are better than manual tools, but Courtney likes to use the manual stuff for some reason other than the glue gun. Um, the glue gun, she does use, you know, the mechanism of heat to melt the glue because if you just rolled it back and forth in your hands for a long time, it would eventually get there, but it would take a much longer time to do the crafts than it would with the glue gun, which is why I keep telling her she should use a mechanical screwdriver. Uh, she should use a, a powered saw of some sort to cut her things instead of miter shears. Boy, she is big on this brocade on this project. Not even sure what it is. These may be cookies. If they are cookies, again, not edible. Not sure how many times we have to say this, but they are not. All right, back to our Jenga stacking cone game. Um, we've put another thicker dowel rod into the bottom of it. So this makes it, this is like the advanced version. If you have little kids, small children under the age of five, they can play the version where you don't have the bigger stick at the bottom. If you have older kids or if this is, you know, you and your significant other playing, um, yes, you should put the extra large dowel rod at the bottom. Oh, here we go with the glue strings again. Goodness sakes. Um, now she is putting perimeter weights onto the Jenga cone game. These weights will make it more heavy on one side than the other, and so you have to kind of turn them in the right directions to balance out so that it doesn't fall over as easily. 
and more of the inedible peppermints. And this is like, this is master level. If you really want the game to be hard, um, you should put these on top because it really throws off the center of gravity and makes it much more difficult to balance the cones on top of our cone Jenga game. Um, the ones at the bottom are just there. Like, you know, if you've been through three rounds and nobody's lost yet, I think you can just throw an extra one up on top to make it extra hard. Uh, because there's no way that you would be able to just stack that on top of the tip of the cone. That's a very small surface area. It would be very difficult to balance up there. And another inedible, again, inedible gingerbread man um, down at the base. That thing you're not going to balance at all. Um, and so we have a couple of different versions here. Uh, again, beginner and advanced versions. The longer you go on that stick, the more easily it's going to tip over. For our next project, which is what she would say if she were voicing this video over, but I'm not going to say it because this is my video, not hers. We're going to take all of the string off of this sign. Um, then we're going to take a paint scraper and a heat gun. Because apparently a hot paint scraper scrapes better than a cold one does. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb here and say, not really sure that that makes any difference, but if it makes her feel better, whatever works. Now, she's tearing the sign off completely. Like, just get a square of wood. Why do we need to take a frame off and strings with beads on them and all kinds of and stickers and everything else? Just get a square of wood, for goodness sake. And now we have a piece of peppermint striped fabric, and we are going to glue the peppermint striped fabric onto the square of wood. We bought an entire sign with all kinds of other things on it and took all of these pieces off of it just to end up with a square of wood. It's not even wood. That's like MDF or press board or something. We could just get cardboard. Just take a piece of cardboard next time. Just ignore everything that she's doing here. Take a square of card. Oh, it looks horrible on the front too. Why even peel it off? Oh, she reused the frame. Okay, I stand corrected. There was a purpose to having the frame, but why tear the stuff off the back of it if you're not going to use that side anyway? That makes absolutely no sense. Now she's going to take paper grocery sack and cover over the part that she ripped up and made extra messy so that it doesn't look so messy. That's way better, in my opinion. And my opinion is what counts. Now we have a sticker. Mrs. Claus Christmas Bakery. Uh, Mrs. Claus is not a gingerbread woman. Not really sure why the visual representation above Mrs. Claus there is of a gingerbread woman because Mrs. Claus was not a gingerbread woman. Uh, Mrs. Claus has white hair. Uh, she wears all red, just like Santa. It's in Santa red on her clothes. Um, there is some speculation that, you know, she is not jolly and fat like Santa is. Um, I can neither confirm nor deny um, but now we're going to take more inedible cookies, and I cannot emphasize this enough, people. Do not, do not, do not eat the things in Courtney's video, even though they look like they should be eaten. Anyway, we've got the sticker with not Mrs. Claus and the Christmas bakery, and now, oh, we're reusing the beaded string. Why take it off if you're just going to put it back on? That makes absolutely no sense. Instead of ripping that frame off, she could have just cut out a square of the peppermint striped fabric, the size of the inside of the frame, and stuck it in there. Never taken the beaded string off of there and slapped the sticker and the inedible cookies on top of it. Done. But she got the paint scraper out and the heat gun and did something that makes no sense. And we are now all sillier for having watched her do it. Um, okay, so this is designed to hang on door handles of the barn door. Uh, we have a large barn in our backyard where the cattle and horses live. This is not a craft. Uh, this is my kitchen. Uh, to the right, you will see a jar labeled sugar. It, in fact, has monk fruit in it, not sugar. Uh, monk fruit is some sort of a sugar substitute. Uh, when you are on a low-carb diet, you can put that in your coffee. I do not drink coffee, but Courtney does. So she is very familiar with this, and that is her monk fruit next to the cured coffee machine. Bam! Instantly decorated. I have no idea how she instantly decorated that. Uh, Ginger's Bakery, in case you did not know, Courtney is a redhead. Uh, redheads are also referred to in some circles as gingers, which does not make a lot of sense because ginger is not actually red. If you've ever seen any real ginger, it's just kind of a light beige or brownish color. And then you get to the inside of it, and it's a little more yellow, but certainly not orange or red. Um, 
not sure why, you know, they call people who are redheads gingers. Carrot top makes a lot more sense to me. These are all things that she did not craft and just bought, I think, for the most part. I do recognize a few things that may or may not have been crafted by her, but most of this just looks like it was purchased at Hobby Lobby. Um, Hobby Lobby, if you did not know, is where Courtney likes to go without a list and will not get a cart because she only needs three things until four hours later we come staggering out the weight of half of the store on my back as I try and carry the bags and large purchases, signs half the size of highway billboards out to the truck so that we can get everything loaded up. We have to pull a trailer behind us, but she will not get a cart at Hobby Lobby. If you want to know what I'm talking about, follow me on Instagram at Real Mr. Cheap. Um, you can see the struggle that is me going to Hobby Lobby with Courtney. So anyway, there's my kitchen. Thank you for watching. It's signed Courtney, but we should scratch that out and write Real Mr. Cheap. I am so proud to have been here with you guys today. I hope that you have a happy holiday, and I look forward to seeing you all again in the new year.